Hey guys, Dr. Nora here. Now I am about to have a one day session in, as a GP, in one of the notorious areas of London that is known as Peckham. Now in order to fit in well and not get looked at or robbed or mugged or anything like that, I have actually gone incognito. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing my glasses today. I've got my hair tied up and I've taken off my jewelry. <sighs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Now, I wasn't nervous initially. I just thought, oh, whatever, it's going to be a normal GP practice. I'm just going to sit there, do my thing, four hours, whatever, get over and done with. However, I met a local family who were like, oh my God, you're working in Peckham. Oh my God, you better be careful. You can't leave. You, you know, you're going to get mugged. You're going to get stabbed. You're going to get shot. Here's I'm cool. thinking, oh my God, seriously? And they're like, yeah, make sure you're a bodyguard. I'm like, what? Seriously, what's wrong with you? So basically the plan is to get in and then at lunch break, get out, go in my car, drive somewhere completely safe and come back just for the last two hours. And uh, hopefully I'm making out alive. So I'm going to let you know how exactly it goes, what kind of cases I come across as well. My mind is racing. Am I going to get like drug dealers? Or am I going to get like people who are stabbed? I've no idea. All I can know is that I just pray to God that I'm going to come out alive. So I'm midway through my morning and I've seen a few patients. The funniest thing is the accent. It's such a London accent compared to Australia. The actual room itself is not that exciting. It smells a bit funny in here. I've opened the window because it's really stinky. Um, had a few issues with getting equipment. Finally, I've managed to get settled down. I'm racing through my morning. I've got another two patients waiting, but I'm only running about 10 minutes late. Yeah, it's weird being back in England. But generally, the consultation is quite straightforward. Earwax, tonsillitis, cough, cold, whatever. Pretty standard. But the funniest notable difference is that strong London accent. All right, doctor. Yeah, my ears are blocked. All right, better get back to it. So I've got about three more patients left to see for my morning. It's gone by really quickly. I have to say, the kind of preamble that I had about, oh, you're gonna get mugged, you're gonna get this and that, actually made me feel really kind of like this in front of my patients, which has actually helped because they're actually quite friendly, which is bizarre. So yeah, all good so far. Patients haven't really done anything to me just yet. <laughs> um, sounds awful, but yeah, they've all been friendly. They've been fine, no issues so far. So yeah, all going well. <sighs> Only in London will you get a dog being transported on a trolley. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes, yes, we're coming through. We're coming through. So on the right, you can see the beautiful Buckingham Palace. Now the Queen is in today because it was her trooping of the colors. And as you can see, there are plenty of barricades around. This area was completely blocked up about three hours ago with humans just having a look, waiting to catch an eager glimpse of Meghan Markle, Prince Harry and the Queen herself. And boy, what is it a day to remember. So they're actually planning to renovate Big Ben and I believe it's going to be out of action for four years in total, I believe. And so each of the New Year's that's going to come up, they're not going to be able to use the Big Ben as their New Year's Eve um, clock, which will be interesting for Londoners. Hasn't happened in over 50 years, I believe. Now we're driving past Downing Street. So I am alive. Whew. <laughs> I've made it through my day at the most notorious place in London to work as a GP. <sighs> I think actually in the end, there was probably a bit too much hype about how dangerous or how scary it was. I didn't actually feel threatened once at all during my session. The morning, as you can see, went by a breeze, and so did the afternoon as well. I had about 
I was booked in to have 15 patients, but two of them didn't turn up. And one of them was like a fake um, patient. I think it must've been a break or something, which was really quite nice. Cause I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm running on time. And I actually finished on time, dead on 6.30. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. The kind of things people saw me about, well, I had a few sticky eyes for children. I had a sore throat. I had a lot of blood test results actually. Probably about 50% of my patients came in for their blood results, which is pretty straightforward because a lot of them were normal. So I could just say, yeah, it was normal. Yeah, normal. Yeah, normal. Yeah, normal. And like the weird thing was, and I don't know if this is just because I'm here and I'm just like a locum doctor, but the the actual session time I had with each of my patients, the consultation time was literally only about five minutes. There probably was one that was 10 minutes long, but it was just five minutes. And that's just in stark contrast with Australia where I will be seeing my patient. I never see a patient in five minutes. Usually I'll see them for 10 or 15 minutes and we're just talking. And I wonder if that's because people in Australia are more friendlier versus people here in, well, this notorious area of London called Peckham are just a bit more kind of conservative and they didn't really want to talk to you. They're just like, yep, yeah, okay, thanks, bye. Or maybe also because the expectation is that these patients have been drilled to know that they're only allowed to spend 10 minutes. So in their heads, they're like, oh my God, I've only got 10 minutes with the doctor. Whereas in Australia, maybe it's a bit more relaxed. I don't know, it's interesting. That was my most interesting observation was that people here, they're happy to leave after a couple of minutes of talking to the doctor. Whereas in Australia, they talk a lot longer. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was nice being back in England and nice being back doing GP work here and just kind of sensing the different stuff. I mean, pretty much the medication's the same. Um, you know, you have your guidelines, you can just follow that by. At the end of my shift, actually, it was really sweet. I went to go and hand in all of my equipment because I brought all this equipment from the practice manager because I didn't have anything. She goes to me, oh, okay, so have you booked any more shifts with us? And I was like, uh, no, not yet. She goes, um, oh, okay, because we'd really love to have you back. And I was like, thanks, yeah, I'll keep an eye out for it online. Just like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a nice practice, I have to say. Like, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best. The actual amenities for the GP consultation room were pretty abysmal. Um, the decoration was abysmal. It looks like it needs a complete refresh but I got through it and I feel like, I feel proud about that because I had an expectation that I was gonna come out dead. So, <laughs> I'm alive <laughs> and I've done it. <laughs> and the reason why I thought I was gonna die was because of this guy here. <laughs> uh, I grew up in this turf, it's the, the roughest area. My mum's been jumped with a knife, my brother's been jumped with a knife. It's uh, two weeks ago, some guy was shot with a shotgun, another guy was stabbed. It's a really, really rough borough. But I experienced none of that and I, I was so scared like even just literally just now when I was exiting the medical centre I was like looking left and right who's coming out to get me and nobody did thank god of course of course thank god of course one of the uh, interesting things about this um, area that I was working today was it's a very ethnically diverse population now with that comes very sort of specific names and usually what happens in a general practice you can press the button and the name comes up on the screen it says go to room 48 however mine wasn't working for some reason so i had to whenever i click the patient's name i have to read the name memorize it in my head until i made the short walk down to the waiting room try and regurgitate back the name making sure i wouldn't offend anybody in the way i'm pronouncing their name because obviously knowing that people are going to kill me <laughs> i was like okay i'm going to pronounce every single thing there was a few times actually that I thought, you know, maybe I should write it down on a piece of paper and just like <laughs> read it off. But one of the funny, one of the good things they have there is they have a little microphone. So like a couple of times I'd go and get the patient, call them by their name and they wouldn't respond. So you press the button and you got this microphone and you can say their names. So I was like reading it off the screen. <sighs> yeah, that was interesting. I had to put on a bit of an accent. Yes. I, got, I got ethnic. One of my patients even said to me, oh, you pronounce my name really well. I was like, mm, thanks. <laughs> she said, thank you. I love Peckham, man. Whereas in, in Australia, you just get like Harry. But yeah, you get my drift. It's very ethnically diverse here, which was fun. It was really fun to see. And just, yeah, every time I look out in the waiting room, you just see lots of different people there. It was, it was great. It was great. I love it. I love it. Jeez.